were in the region. I don't know about Africa. In silos. They say they just do one side. Yes. And the academics do their own thing. People do their, yeah. But, but we really need to do it to, to, to have cross fertilization. Agreed. Because we all share exactly the same problems trying to make the same space. Yeah. 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 No, I completely agree with you and I think that was one of the most effective strategies for us, right? So we, we had a group um, that was, you know, very technical that would be able to go and participate in all the technical discussions, but we also had a constituency there. But you remember, we used to be in Trinidad and, you know, we went to Trinidad, we went to St. Vincent, we did St. Lucia where we had mass mobilizations, brought people to the street to be able, as you said, to kind of amplify the things that we were also then saying on the inside. And I think that has to be, you know, one of the kind of critical lessons, and I, at least for me, one of the most effective strategies that we use within the, um, within the Caribbean to bring attention. I could speak to, for instance, we did in St. Lucia, and a perfect example. And in St. Lucia, we started that out as a mass mobilization, right? So we had boatloads of farmers that came in, you know, on their boats and that sort of stuff like that. We brought in some, you know, international um, persons as well to build solidarity. And because we were able to demonstrate that we could be able to bring civil society out, we got an invitation then to actually go and participate in the negotiation then, um, you know, and then bring a different voice, but also remembering and letting them know, don't forget, we have a constituency out there that is demanding. Um, so I think that is extremely uh, important in terms of a strategy, David. Yeah, we, we were inside and outside to some extent in Trinidad today as well, um, because there is a process in Trinidad today where there's a standing committee on trade, mm -hmm. where the private sector and the trade unions were involved in that and some um, NGOs as well, so that we could have made that input there as well as with the outside mobilization. But ultimately, Chantal, we have to admit that we weren't able to stop it. Right. And I think what happened is that our government caved in on the fair issue that if you don't sign by December 31st, then you will not have any access to the European, to the European market for, for, yeah. for, for our goods. And they, 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 they were fearful and scared and they capitulated. And so we have to then, for this round coming up, mm -hmm. strengthen that ability to conscientize people and mobilize people to, to make sure that the government don't cave in at the last moment. That's a good point. I think to answer that because uh, one of the problems that have done is the more effective the outside problem is that they work much more closely with their domestic producers and the union and the mm. to generate counter pressure. Yeah. Because they're both producers and trading unions are not, they didn't need a retail market. Right, right. Then so wouldn't have been. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I no, I agree. That we have to think about is how do we get um, a situation where governments can't sign these agreements without parliamentary approval and debate. Right. Yes, yes, because, yes. I agree. These agreements affect all of our people. I agree, yeah, right? I, I think that we need to get parliamentary debate and approval so that there's, there's a, a much uh, wider sense of transparency. Yes, and accountability as well, which is ex which is extremely, extremely, extremely important. Yeah. And the fact that you can have governments signing off on these agreements that are going to impact and run over anybody's single term, yeah. um, I completely agree with you in, all, in terms of that.